we didn't like life still is not really the hero you think about when you think of being buffed up by ogre whereas void can really take advantage of the blood loss that comes in from this hero as well as from the fire blast so and it's also definitely a comfort pick i remember schling's playing this hero like years and years back even before he joined wrg this was one of his big heroes um the schling's uh ogre major so it's not really that much of a surprise to see that happening here yeah, uh, they, they, they've opted to go for their Troll Warlord as their sort of response. We've seen the matchup between uh, Faces Void and the Troll Warlord, and I think it went the way of the Faces Void. In fact, was yeah. it Sinus 5 Energy that played that game? I think, I uh, think it may have been, been actually. Yeah. yeah. And it was exactly this way around. Energy had the Troll and Sinus 5 had the Faces Void. I might be wrong. I might be wrong here. I'm spitballing that one from memory i didn't cast that game so it doesn't stick as well um but yeah they ban out the well pugna though that's yeah they have something. to you know this troll has similar problems against the void that we saw in the previous game lifesteal having versus void where it's just you can fight at a very particular point in the game but in the grand long long game scheme of things you're just always going to fall off against this hero and there's just so many options for them to to we don't even know what the partner is for void The invoker being taken up. I think it's going to continue along this vein as well. Yeah, sadly, we're not going to see the castaway invoker. Nope. Which, uh, was really sick yesterday. Um, but banning out the Kunko, realizing that that's a, a pain in the butt. Well, had a pretty nice game on that. Overall, he's just able to pressure quite a lot and dealt fairly well with the Enigma until the Enigma got the BKB. Uh, but I doubt Sinister Five are even considering Enigma after that game. What do you think they're just that comfortable with that hero? Nope, nope, nope. I think right now Enigma might come out, but it has to come out in the game for Enigma. I don't think Sinister Five will pick that hero again unless they have last pick in these drafts. If they do have last pick, then they could go for that. Because uh, they had last pick in the game one and they still didn't go that well, but I think that's the only other scenario. But for now, I think they probably want to put... Dota and Diane, something a bit more active. Give them these heroes that do stuff on the map, you know? They don't just have to farm up these util items and wait until they become effective in the game. Yeah, uh, I agree. The voice spirit is also going to be banned on Outcha, something that uh, has been scary for Sinister Fire because they got they play it in two different, entirely different ways, right? Costaways yeah. played it as well as Dota and Diane. They've looked really hot on that. So chucking that in the bin. You're going to have none of that. Not again. So, uh, yeah. The Venom you know, in the previous drops, I was kind of certain that they were going to put that uh, Faceless Void, I was going to put the Void Spread, excuse me, into the off lane. It was kind of surprising for me that they decided to run yeah. it into the mid lane because then it kind of meant that when that Enigma came out, there's not that many team fighting options for them. But yeah. I think Energy probably had the right read that Sinister Fire will have changed their minds about this and will try to make sure that they have as many active heroes as possible. Venom Ban is pretty a good one in this game, especially when you already have Troll Oracle. You don't want to give them that massive amount of control and AOE magic damage for Welp. We've already seen how effective he is. I mean, the three heroes that they've actually banned in a row are pretty much just directly, what's Welp playstyle? Oh, dominate the zone and do lots of damage? Cool. Ban those heroes then. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think you just got to go with the sort of safest approach that you possibly can here to uh, negate what they can possibly be doing. But Going very slowly through it, like you say, the Venom ban has occurred, and um, now possibly the Enchantress ban. That's something that since I picked up on the past four, I think Doom Bunny was playing that just the other day, mm. and it was super effective for them. Thoughts? Uh, it's a good ban, making sure that they also don't have easy access to additional damage inside the bubble, and if you're going to be picking a hero like the Phoenix, you also want to make sure that there's no hero that can easily just get, for example... Enchantress, very often nowadays, is going to be hunting less so for the sense of Conqueror of old, but nowadays it's all about that Hellbear Smasher, and you get that attack speed aura, which is very good against the egg. So, decent ban from them. I like this pick of the Phoenix as well, being able to get an additional ultimate, which can sort of counteract what Sinister Fire brings to the table with the Chronosphere from the Faces Void. So, yeah. pretty decent ban, pretty decent pick from them here. Uh, also, probably a, a sort of a ban pick, right? The Phoenix and the Face of Void, if it looks so good together. Yeah. I, I like this this pickup quite a lot. And deals fairly well with Face of Void in lane, as, as you have brought up. 
Where, where are you looking to go here with the faces forward? What's, what sort of damage are you looking to apply into these chronospheres? Because I don't see... I'm struggling to think of it off the top of my head. Do you have any ideas? Uh, the heal that immediately comes to mind when I'm thinking about the damage, obviously, Invoker, that's already been banned out. They could potentially still go for DP themselves. They've already been showed a, pr a predilection towards having Skyrath Mage, so that's always been an age-old combo, having the ultimate mm. into the bubble itself. That hero hasn't been banned out just yet. Uh, we've also seen in the past, not that much nowadays, but some Lina picks coming in to bolster the damage inside the bubble. Yeah. I think at this point, honestly, the only thing is that a four position that does a lot of magical burst. So that pretty much is Lena, Scarlet Mage, maybe four Lesh if they're feeling that kind of bravery, but I doubt it. Perhaps Rubik? Yeah, like well, these sort of heroes, yeah. Yeah, they went with the Scarlet Mage, so that's a ton of potential damage, like you said, possibly going down. We did see Castaway play the. Um, play the less rack yesterday so you did bring that up it could be potentially something as energy you do opt to go with the legion commander here so legion commander probably going to pair up with that phoenix and lane a decent amount of damage potentially that can be coming down uh there for the face of voice to deal with this is a bit concerning he's obviously able to jump off the legion's damage but the tick damage from the phoenix is a pain in the butt and trying to get those last hits. Do you try and shuffle those lanes up? Try and make sure your faces for it doesn't meet the Phoenix in lane. Are we going to see what we saw in game one? Everyone running all over the place, trying to get the best lane possible. Or do you just sort of commit? No, I think in this game, we're just going to see hard commitment to a lot of these lanes. I really like this pick on the... See, the the offlane pick is actually pretty great for what both teams are trying to do in this game. Mm. For energy esports, they get this LC. Another a hero with a natural debuff to, you know, bolster the additional debuffs they already have from the Oracle and the Troll. Therefore, pretty much none of the stuns that they have from Sinister 5 would have worked up until this point, except for the bubble. They get themselves, though, the Mars immediately afterwards so that they have that zone of control extra above and beyond what they already had with the Faces Void. So even up against the debuff from the LC, as well as the Phoenix Egg, they still have a way to be able to get some great team fight for themselves inside of Sin 5. Man, these opening picks are going to really make this game dynamic. It's going to be a very fight-heavy game. We're probably going to see this Void Troll not involved as much as we would normally see in these carry matchups. But these Mars Legion Commander is going to be very important for both of them to get as early mobility items as humanly possible, just to move around the map, bouncing around kills. Mars pairing up with the Scarlet Page to make that happen. And the LC being able to pair up with the Phoenix, plus whatever hero they're going to get lost for the mid lane. Yeah, well... So this is about making sure that uh, energy don't dig too deep in their pockets and pull out a, a Huskar, banning that out. The TA ban, is that sort of leaning you in any direction? Are you thinking that energy might consider a puck last pick, or is no, it just something that so. might combo well here with the Faces Void? Yeah, they're just worried about what hurts, mm. taking out all the hurty heroes. I think right now for energy esports, they also want... I mean, they could potentially still go for this Adastan puck, but... I think Adasan wants something a little bit more active than that, or is there something that allows them to kill heroes a bit more. Generally, when we see an energy play this puck, they tend to put it in the offlane for Whelp, and I think that's where the hero is strongest right now. So, I'm not... It's possible still, though, that it's hero come out. Yeah, well, I was just... I'm trying to think for a TA ban, like you say, they're just worried actually about their potential burst damage. Mm. Probably... Mm. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but maybe they have something in mind. They do ban out the Viper. That's a, another interesting ban, something we haven't seen too much of. Um, again, since I probably just don't want to deal with some trickery that energy might have you, as they do have the last pick, which is at least something to, oh to consider. SF ban. Dude, dude, yeah. Sin, 5, Sin 5 could pick Zeus. Sin 5 could pick Zeus and get away with it right now, because there's not really that much that energy has to fully deal with that hero. I mean, mm -hmm. they have magic resist from the Oracle. Lee LC is very unhappy when she has to be rushing the pipe of insight first. And, you know, Troll will be buying BKB eventually, but they need damage into the bubble. They need a decent hero for the mid lane, and they need a way to be able to scale later in terms of damage. Mm -hmm. So I think a hero like that, maybe, mm -hmm, if not that, maybe Necro. Didn't we see we saw Necro earlier today? It didn't really work out, but the idea was there. They've only got 10 seconds to make the decision, though, so I think they have to get, like, a high Magical Burst hero. Oh, Storm's oh, okay. Uh, Storm still works, yeah, son. Is this a free Storm game? It seems a bit sketchy. You got a net potential from the troll. You got dual potentially, if they you to get the jump. Is it Does it feel that 
it's all right. It's I mean, okay. It's not the best Storm game. Like you mentioned, I think the the hugest deal for Storm to have to try to circumnavigate is having to work around Fate's Edict from Oracle because that negates literally all of your damage in Storm Spirit. Mm. And it's that. You have to deal with the ultimate from Trolls. You don't burst them. Uh, with the Orchid, before he pops the ultimate, you pretty much always have to run away. LC has a heal. Phoenix has a heal. It's one of those awkward Storm games where it's not even about the catch, but just who do you actually kill a Storm Spirit? It's not that important for you to be able to dive anybody but the Oracle, but even if you dive Oracle, there's no guarantee that you can immediately burst this hero every single fight because they will have LC there with the press the attack to make sure that Oracle can survive the initial salvo. So I don't know. It feels a bit awkward. It's safe. It's safe, but is it free? I don't know. I don't think it's a free game now. Well, big pick now for Energy Esports. They do have this last pick. Probably looking for Adastam Hero. Dealing with the Storm Spirit in the mid lane. I suppose there are some answers. Queen of Pain comes to mind, but we haven't seen that hero do well at all uh, recently. Mm, so. Not at all. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, the Adam Druid. Druid. The Adam Druid. Okay. Silla Bear, man. That's a, that's a pick. All right. You get those roots down. That's also pretty effective against the Storm if you're able to get the catch on him. But obviously looking for that, uh, that tower destruction that, that comes with the Lone Druid. Man, Damn. which draft are you favoring here? Dude, I love this energy draft. Let me not lie to you. Mm. Like, yo, I like the synergy between Sinister 5. Of, I like the core of Void with Ogre, Scarlet Mage as supports. And I think there's decent potential for team fights around the Mars, the Spirit. But I think energy has pretty much ticked every single box they need to, right? They have a decent team fight between the Phoenix, the Troll Oracle. They have very good Tower Siege between the Troll Lone Druid. The same is true for Roshan. Their lanes are not going to be terrible whatsoever. I mean, these lanes are going to be really good, right? Like, this Lone Druid mid matches up quite well versus Storm Spirit. There's pretty much nothing that this Mars can do by himself. Like, even with the uh, Shlinx backing him up. It, and with Shanks or Doom Bunny, actually, it's probably going to be Doom Bunny in that lane. But mm. against the Deppy Oracle lane, that troll is going to be perfectly fine. And in the off lane, we have this LC Phoenix, who is going to have perfect sustain for whelps of LC, as well as being able to apply pressure potentially towards this Vaseless Void. Man, I really like this energy esports draft. I think they're actually going to take in two of the strength of this as well. Yeah, that's, that's concerning stuff. We could be here for a long time, man. I mean,. Sinister 5 are definitely favorites, potentially, but um, Energy have been drafting well, they've been playing just brilliant Dota, and uh, kind of probably expect to see a lot more from them as yeah. uh, that we do get ourselves into the game. And a quick smoke pop here by the side of Sinister 5. They're going to see if they can get a little bit of a, a cheeky catch, bring down the Adistam. His bear is going to obviously go and help sort of right click battle for a ruin but they look for a wrap around here potentially onto him Looking no they're actually gonna go into the high ground let's see if they can mm. catch anyone seems like Deppy's playing it safe yeah well they're actually walking very aggressively maybe the they get lane. a duel or something but i don't think they're gonna get anything out of this they're yeah. trying to posture right now aggressively this lane is super important for them though. I think they'd probably recognize that if Dota and Die doesn't have a good early game, this game is basically unwinnable. There's gonna be a huge period of time where the arena of blood and Mars jumping in either with Yules, Blink, Vlads, whatever item he decides to go for. It's gonna be a crucial thing for them. He probably has to rush drums in this game actually to be able to be able to activate the rest of the team. Either way though, they are gonna be in a situation where they need Dota and Die to do very, very well. And the lane itself, I suppose if he goes like an early point into having uh, both Bulwark and God's Rebuke, like if he goes 0-2-2, yeah. two, two, maybe 0-2-1 at level 3, then this lane isn't actually that bad. He can survive yeah. for the most part. So maybe that's the decision for him. Either way though, it's probably a good thing that they're keeping Doom Bunny here. Make sure that the high damage dealing support is ensuring that the Mars is getting as much out of his lane as possible. And then Aghanim. Aghanim will be fine just having Shlinks backing him up. This lane isn't really too terrible for the faces void down bottom. He's not able to really zone out these heroes. They're going to pressure him mostly, but he should be able to get some kind of farm out of it, especially to make up for the fact that this mid lane definitely not going to be the easiest overall for Castaway. Yeah, that's... that's It's a very tough lane. I think every time you play up against a Storm Spirit, you just have a tough time. One of the things, you don't pull aggro if you hit the, the bear, so you can try and get as much damage down onto it as possible, but... 
Adastam has already got a potential respawn if necessary for that, and uh, tough, tough to say mm -hmm. the least. Meanwhile, top lane, they're looking like we they're just going to both posture quite aggressively, these two supports. But Mental does a, a really decent amount of uh, magical damage when he does hit that level 2. So actually keeping Doom Bunny quite far out of this uh, battle, and he's actually going to keep the chase up here. Could this be one of the slowest first bloods of our life? Uh, mm. ha just stay tuned. <laughs> no, it seems like the Scarlet Mage is definitely much faster, as well as having concussive shots. Gonna yeah. secure your walk away with that one. Damn, this is a bit too high. Uh, let's see. I don't know, Doom Bunny. Just wasting time here. I guess this is okay. Doom Bunny knows that the main thing for him is that as long as he's making sure that Deppy is just one v one versus the small brother, Jack can pump by himself. Nice. That was so sick, actually. That was so great. He's crazy. still alive, dude. <laughs> This is so painful. Meanwhile, he's gonna TP himself. No way! <laughs> I'm out of here, boys. I got a career. I got myself an out. That really sucks for Adistan. What was on that career? Did you manage to catch that? Nah, I didn't see what was on the career, but I think it was on the way. Uh, probably bringing just some regen items. Yeah. It seemed like it was on the way back actually, because it already delivered the uh, shit, like the self to Adam. So yeah. I don't know. Okay. Feels bad. Uh, right? It's it's money. And a lot of time wasted there for the Skyrath Mage. Uh, sorry, not for the Skyrath Mage, for the Oracle. So yeah, that's something to at least consider. But um, other than that, seeing that we've now missed at least 100 last hits around the map, mm -hmm. let's have a look at these matchups. Uh, Castaway is still faring pretty decently, but as Adastam gets levels, it gets a bit more scary. You can see he's opting to try and put as much pressure on Adastam's hero on the Silo Bear itself. Yeah. Um, or on the lone dread over the bear, which is uh, probably the way to go about it. But tough, he does have the bottle up, so it's going to keep him alive. But that roots from the bear can be a very, very scary thing, especially if there's a rotation that does come through. Speaking of scary things, this bottom lane, well, as per normal, is having a very scary early portion of the game. He's CS leader here in the bottom lane, completely unpressured, still has four tangles to himself, sitting very pretty. In this game having absolutely no issues one of the frustrations is going to be that for quite a long time agonum will not be able to really make progress outside of this lane because wap is going to be this just like massive force that's just sitting here until they get a rotation in from the castaway storm spirit this lc is definitely not going to die so that means that this early portion of the game is going to be pretty much free farm for Welp. so whatever item they need on the side of energy they should be able to pick up quite easily we see a yeah. small Ish rotation, Doom Bunny is going to drag in a fairly large creep wave from top, just doing the normal things, pulling for his offlaner, trying to make yeah. life as easy as possible. Yeah, Dead and I and Doom Bunny are definitely smiling about this one. This is a... Uh, gonna pull the wave. This actually hurts this matchup because Deppy now might miss out on a CS or two, uh, especially the experience. Uh, of course, they're going to lose out on some, but it does force them to not be able to pull multiple factors. Storm has got really good XP in this lane. Okay, there is a wave still coming in for the lone druid, so he should hit that level 5. Oh. Nice. That, that happened. I missed that one. What? How? Yeah, they Were they trying to contest that pull? Yeah, they're trying to contest the pull, then he found himself getting God rebuked oh. uh, to make matters worse. He got speared to a tree as well, so ended up dying there. Bot lane, same. Sort of situation, Rolf taking a, a walloping as well as Agnum. They're trading it out a little bit here, but... Needs to be careful. Agnum does have the jump. He's going to get a lot of his health back. And you got to be very, very aware of what, say, uh, LC can actually do to you. It does a, tr a ton of damage. Playing aggressively once again onto Mental. They get the spear, follow up damage. Oh, the concussive shot will be enough. And they bring him down nice. again. So this lane is actually not going too bad for Dota and Die. Um, at least yeah. they're finding those kills. Maybe not the best CS, but he's up there. He's up there for sure. Yeah, but not, things, not are going, things are going decently well, I think, at the end of the day for the Smalls. They're going to potentially get a kill onto Deppy, but they just want to zone him out of this lane, make it as difficult for him to keep pressure out in this particular stage of the game. So I think overall, Sinister 5 will be really happy with the recovery that they've made, especially here in the top lane. And we can see that their CS is also caught up pretty much across the board. It's only really this LC lane down bottom that's going very, very well for energy anymore. Because middle, oh, top lane, Deppy, okay, in a little bit of trouble, he gets off the warning axis, he should be okay. But well, we yep. do see that middle, Castaway, has actually managed to do a fantastic job with the oh. DD, he's actually diving directly onto Adistan. Yeah, he's looking for something on Adistan, but can he bring him down? He does have the DD. 
Um, as stated, actually, Root's going to come out now onto Castaway. He's looking to try and turn this one around. He goes onto Adistam. Who's going to get the upper hand? It looks like he should. He does get feared, but it's not going to fear him in the right direction. And that was a respawn of the bear for Lone Druid. I must keep that in mind. I think he actually has a backup cooldown there. But, um, yeah, that's oh, no. not what I expected to have happen. That's huge, dude. Uh, the other, like, the bear's still going to be available when they come back, but... I passed away being able to get that kill. Okay, hold on, bottom. I might get one more. Okay, never mind. But the huge thing there is that at the end of the day, now Castaway is going to be in this huge position where this lane is not just a success for him, but also it's going to be by the time Adastam comes back, he's not going to be as poised to be able to apply pressure back into the lane directly. And the one good stroke of luck though is that Deppy did end up dying, but he dies to creeps instead of just falling into the lane itself. But it's still pretty bad news because it means that they are still able to exert their influence more and more across the map right now for Sinister 5. Yeah, and I think that was a, uh, well, an, in not an intentional death to the creep, right? I think they were going on him and the, the tomato clapped him to death, so that's maybe a bit unfortunate for Sin 5. But they're keeping him out of the lane, slowing his farm down and doing quite an effective job. In fact, this troll's having a really tough time finding the CS he needs. He's getting everything that he needs right now. Uh, one of the concerns though is that Castaway. Okay, top lane though. We have a committal of the ultimate from Moss. Oh yeah, that's gonna be the arena of blood. Is it gonna be good enough though? Deppy, they're gonna try and turn this one around of him. So the arena of blood maybe, unfortunately, not gonna work out there for him. But it's got a it's got a pretty big cooldown at least at level one. So. That's uh, a bit of a victory for energy. Now they're looking to turn something around. The spear's going to be off the mark. Meanwhile, bot lane rotation coming in. Haste on Castaway. He's looking for the kill on Welp. Yeah, can he bring him down? Welp's got no mana left to do much more. Still has the haste, has a decent amount of mana. Don't think he's going to look for the kill on TKC. But again, great success here for Castaway. Yeah, that was the only one of the only ways that could make a kill like that happen. Moving in the Storm Spirit down bottom to get that kill. Great advancement there coming in from the Storm Spirit. I yeah. think one of the things that also needs to change hugely for them is that as soon as the Storm Spirit starts to be enabled in this game, this Orchid, man, this Orchid can make a huge difference onto heroes like the LC and the Troll because it doesn't seem like either of them are really going to be prioritizing some defensive items. They're going to need damage in this game. So that's going to open up some space for Castaway to be able to have a huge impact as much as possible. Yeah. And uh, Doom Bunny is just being a pain in the butt. Just keeping this Oracle as far away from the lane as possible, making Deppy's life very difficult, not having that extra support. And dealing with the Mars, you, you sort of want that extra bit of help in the lane, so... Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate there. At least for Deppy. He needs uh, he needs something. Does he have to go into the jungle here? I don't think he has to just yet. I think he'll... He can just pull a little bit, but I think with Mental being nearby, it should still be okay overall for him to also collect farm from the lane. As long as he can't just venture far out though, because we've gotten to that point where the only way he can venture too far out is if every single hero on the team has TP available because he's too scared of cast away. So as long as he stays safe, he can stay in this area. But I think in the next three or four minutes, he probably will have to go to the jungle. Once cast away, completely vacates this mid lane. Perhaps once they finish off this tier one tower, it's already on half HP. Hmm. Yeah. Castaway has been doing a great job. His net yeah. worth is looking really pristine. I think that early kill from definitely boosted him in the laning stages. As they do rotate three heroes up towards the top here. Sin 5. See if they can maybe put some pressure onto this troll. Who's again forced into a position where he just can't farm. He's forced to actually TP towards the bot lane. And see if he can find something more there. But Sinister 5 feel like they got some really decent control over this game right now. Considering... Now, potential fight here. Jump forward from Castaway onto Deppy. Deppy is going to turn around here. Chrono. Look for a but there's a Chronosphere. It's caught out too. And this should be at least a kill onto TKC. Can they find more? Well, he's pretty quick. He'll be able to get himself an out. But they use a the Chronosphere successfully. A lot of heroes are rotating down here, though. So maybe Top a little lane. bit of a, Might be a fight here. Oh, Arena of Blood going to be used and going to be pinning Welp to the wall. But it looks like Dota and Dai needs to get himself out very, very quickly. As uh, there are multiple rotations towards yes, the top the lane here. Duel has been committed. They don't really have the bear, but they're going to just rely on Adasam to try and punch. Duel doesn't work out for him. And again, Mars a pretty good hero versus Duel as he doesn't take too much damage. And he's trying to survive for as long as possible. But finally does take a tumble. 
No rotations mm. coming out from Sinister Fivers. I think they used up all their TPs in the bot lane. I think they're okay with that because that's two core heroes in the top lane. They committed the duel, it doesn't get the bonus damage, mm. and they didn't really have to throw in additional resources themselves to try to get the defense there for Sin 5. So yeah. that's probably okay and acceptable. Nonetheless, yeah. though, still not that great to lose a hero. And this game. Yeah, I think. The fact that Adastan didn't have the bear there was one of the more painful things, right? In trying to bring yeah. down the the Mars and that Bulwark is just so good against Legion Commander in general because you force him to face you, takes that reduced damage, and that's only level one, so yeah. showing its effect as as a, a as an ability versus a zero, for sure. Definitely, definitely. We do see now that as this game is sort of warming over. Oh, this is nice. Castaway has picked himself up in Arcane Ring. And it's only a couple hundred gold away from having the full Orchid. Looks like the team itself might want to try and pursue a fight. They're thinking about a smoke now that Dodan dies on Reno back up. Yep. And as soon as it's back off cooldown, they trigger the smoke. And they're going to look for an engagement. The Dire Scan doesn't connect onto anybody mental. I'm going to lay out Vision, but he's not going to be perfectly positioned to break the smoke. Yes, he will. Not just yet, no, they found Adam, Adam dead, Adam dead. Yeah, Adam, big jump forward onto him here. Yeah, Reno Blood is going to catch out multiple as Wolf does TP himself on it. But scary, look at this really nice Phoenix Egg on the side here. They do bring down Ooh. Doom Bunny. They're going to find a second castaway to fall as well. And maybe that was a bit overzealous here from Sinister Fivers. They have to run away with their tail between their legs. The Reno Blood not paying off whatsoever for the second mm. time. That was so weird. They... Is it just in my eyes? Like, why did they divert attention? between attacking directly onto Adam or going onto Mental. It kind of felt like, because we saw, like, Dota and Diaco missed the arena of blood there, right? Goes directly onto the middle lane, lone druid, but at the same time, the rest of the team decides to rather jump onto the Mental Oracle, so there's not enough damage for either hero. I don't know, that was a very miscommunicative fight, it seems like, from Sinister 5, and as a result, not only do they lose it, but they also end up sacrificing their tier 1 in the mid lane as it gets instantly pushed out by Adam on the lone druid who survived that fight. Oh man, yeah. that's actually pretty huge. Because that's the thing that we were sort of lacking in the previous game, right? Though Energy ended up winning out, it did really mm -hmm. feel like them pushing wasn't always the easiest thing. But this game, they've got Troll, they've got Lone Druid. Pushing is never going to be a problem. Last game, all they really had to unlock that push was the Shadow Fiend. Now they have so many tools. And every time they win a fight, it's going to be a team fight win for them. And now, well, as well. Bot lane. Cosway actually needs to get himself out. He's going to get rooted here. But he should be fine. He's got a decent amount of... Mana, if he needs to escape. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, I, not too. yeah, that's big. Uh, I could potentially look for some sort of a play on the back of that, but there's a lot of heroes in this vicinity. He needs to be careful. This Lone Druid, man. Hitting hard, got a Mask of Madness, and gets the press of the attack. Brings down buildings in a blink of an eye. So, Sinister 5, they got a response to the Shirley. Costaway's hanging around in the back lines. They're going to try and scatter as much as possible. TKC, who had a wonderful egg, even though it didn't connect on anyone previously, is also here, so that is something that will concern them that he's missing off the map. Meanwhile, towards the top, they're going to try and trade at least the tier 1 for tier 1 here. Welp, going to try and slow things down. They've lost the tier 1 in the bot lane. Energy, picking that one up, and seems like they will be happy with the trade. Yeah. As, uh, they are, in fact, ahead, as they did get the tier 1 mid. Now, Castaway, they have heroes in the vicinity. They're not aware that he is here. And uh, seems like uh, energy are posturing to try and potentially just take control of their opposition's jungle. Mm. They're trying to achieve this right now. I think one of the things that they also realized from Sinister 5 is that they don't have to play th this pace that they're setting right now. Okay, they're gonna try to dive at him. Oh, okay. yeah. Do they have the damage though? The SF ulti is gonna be enough. They bring him down. The fear was all right, but not enough. Egg has been and dropped on the side here yeah, just for the escape. And can they look for more? I doubt it. Lynx is walking aggressively. Uh, only Welp could potentially be in a rough position. As, uh, he's actually going to look to send this one around. Duel is up, and he's going to get the duel down onto Doom Bunny, and he will pick it up. That's a quick and easy one for him. And the first, second duel of the game going his way. Yeah, of course. In the mid lane, he got the one. So, T1 Sour, however, they're going to look for a decent trade just in the five. As they do pick that one up after losing a duel. But, um, yeah, even across the board, no tier 1 towers exist. Oh, sorry, bot one still exists, so there is that. Yeah, bot tower still exists. They still have access to that portion of the game. I think one of the big things as well that we're going to be seeing that Tennis to 5 now, after they're able to take on this tier 1 tower, is that the more they're able to play out, 
into the map itself, the more the easier it becomes rather for Castaway to be able to get these long deep zips. And they see they're gonna try to stop him though. They see a smoke up. TKC and Mensa wanna go on a small warding mission. They were hoping maybe that there was a hero down bottom that they could catch up with Adistan, but not gonna be the case for them. But there's gonna be a fight around the bounce rune or the rune itself. Oh yeah, they found a quick kill into Welp. That's quite a nice one for them. They're using the uh, electric vortex as well as the mystic flare. Yeah. To kill that one for themselves. Uh, notably, the Lone Dread now has the Desolator on his bear. These towers are going to go down at one hell of a pace. We'll and you can see Adastam posturing, or actually leaning towards bringing down this tier 2 tower. And no response is coming out from Sinister 5 as of yet. As we see them just turn their heads in the mid lane saying, Oh, something's happening down there. So potentially looking for some sort of an answer. Like I say, that Desolator has been picked up on the bear, mm. so ton of damage it can do. They got to be very careful. Mars has got a blink dagger though, so he's going to position himself in a very, very aggressive yeah, position. Yeah. He can catch a big one here. He is going to see Welp. He throws it down, and that's going to be a duel thrown out onto him at least for now. But the bear zoning the rest of them out could win. Okay, the duel doesn't get one, but he does fall. And it seems like since the five are going to have to run away once again with the tail between their legs, no way of answering back. And look how quickly the tower is going to go down now with the mask of madness used this bear it's so damn hard part of the issue with how that fight ended up unfolding at the end of the day is that they didn't have the void there he was still farming in the top lane nor did he have tp available to come and join the fight bottom but the major 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 issue is that unfortunately the mars went deep into the fight without his compatriots there so there was pretty much no backup available for him so at the end of the day he ends up falling there and they end up losing their tier 2 as well. It does really feel like Sinister 5 in the second game. Feeling like they're under a lot of pressure. But some of the pressure seems to be self-inflicted. Because I think if they had a little bit of time to breathe there. They could have taken that fight successfully. But now because they committed the ultimate down bottom from the Mars. They can't even make this jump in the mid lane. Onto these attacking heroes. And they have to just let them flee to safety. So energy. Yeah. Though it's not a major goal beat for them. They still feel like they're pretty much in control of the game right now. Patient picked up here by Adastam as uh, Castaway Smoke did just break. And they're still trying to look for something off the back of the smoke. They desperately need it. They get a jump out here onto the Oracle. Make sure they can at least secure that kill. Quick and easy one here for Castaway. Are they going to potentially look for more? They do have Chronosphere up. Um, might look for a follow-up. But the side of energy are well positioned here to potentially even turn it around. So they've got to be very, very careful. Yeah. Let's try to find a way for themselves. To at the very least be able to come back and keep things just sort of tight you know what i would like to see right you see these movements that they're making right now into this opposing jungle if they mm. keep this kind of pressure going but also into this middle area of the map that could make a huge difference we see two heroes do money and cost away a posture there but i don't think they can make this jump by themselves they need one more hero to make this easy for them well they semi committed there forced out the lone Druid to use his ultimate potentially that would have been the goal uh, as he tries to fear with the bear, maybe misplay there, but a deal does come through, and that's going to be Doom Bunny going down. And he trades a career for his death. And uh, probably not worth, as that is the deal. And a ton more damage coming down onto the Legion Commander. Yeah. Way more damage than might have been otherwise seen out, but it ends up working out for them. <sighs> This game is starting to get into that point, right? I start getting very, very scared when I see drafts that have these troll legions and these lone druids that are getting into this sort of staccato rhythm where they're not really losing fights, but every time they take in a game and it goes well for them. Mm. Now they're in the Roshan pit, despite knowing that there's all these ultimates available, they're gonna back out from this area, but after they kill Schlenks, there's no reason to go back in. Yeah, Schlenks, he's gonna go down. He tried to scout out something, and they know that the Roshan was happening. I don't know if they're going to be able to contest that. Barback does come through from Schlenks again. We saw this in the previous game, but... Oh, okay. I thought Koso was going to go for a big jump there. Maybe had vision, but... Alas picks up a DD for himself. And yeah. into the Roshan pit goes Aghanim. He's he's actually going to try and look for this one. I don't know if he's going to get much out of it. Adasan sending the bear in there to scout it out, and that's a problem. As uh, energy well, can respond it. very, very quickly. I was looking at now. Blink Dagger, I think, is complete on oh, no, Legion Commander now. Oh, he actually lost his career with it in, so... Is maybe a bit of an issue. They go straight back into the pit. Since the farm, they gotta do something about it. They do have an egg, though. That's scary. 
Oh, jump in for the great, great. Wow. Oh, wow. That was huge. They're looking for a little bit more on the back of it. Oh, man. The egg has been used up here, and they're going to try and bring it down. Apologies for that. Mental's falling low so quickly. Oh, man. He does get brought down. And uh, they're going straight back into the Roshan pit. Sorry, the fight was chaos. And uh, they are going for the Roshan. Apologies about that. Just had a bit of a technical issue on my side. This is a pretty huge issue what just ended up transpiring here for Sinister 5 because not only do they end up losing the fight and having to sacrifice away the Aegis back to its energy esports, but the huge thing in that particular situation was that the fight looked so good for them at the very beginning, being able to pick off the LC quite early on, but unfortunately they had nothing left in the tank to deal with the remaining cores. Oh boy. Now with this Aegis being fully available for the Troll Warlord Debbie, Suddenly, much more threatening in this fight, and he's still going to be building towards his BKB. He just needs a recipe here, Scuppy. And then suddenly, he's going to be effectively immortal in every incoming engagement. Yeah. Well, they are now putting whatever they can, doing what they can. And like you say, the, the troll having this Aegis up, probably going to look to dominate the map once again. So this is five on the back foot. What do you do here? What, what's the plan? What's, what's the, the call out? Do they just rely on Castaway to get these big catches? As he actually, in fact, speaking of, goes straight onto the Legion Commander. Does he have the damage? Phoenix is there to try and give as much heal as possible, but Castaway's <laughs> Orchid's going to secure the final amount of damage to get the kill onto Welp. And that shows the power of the Storm still. The fact that he can do a ton of damage. And in fact, something we don't speak about is that Grobo on Storm yeah. is really, really big. Oh, goodness. Nice. There was a bird nice. there. Yeah, yeah, there was a scar right there, but uh, not anymore, not anymore. But I'm glad actually that Castaway did exactly what he did, because I was going to say that this is pretty much the only way that they have to fully be able to reassert their own control in this game. It's going to come down to what Castaway is able to accomplish over the next couple of minutes with this Orchid, with this Kaya, as he progresses towards having the full Bloodstone. I think Castaway is going to make... It's not even about the necessarily the damage that he dishes out, which is going to be a massive amount, but just him being able to assert a threat against energy that they never really feel safe coming onto the Sinister Five part of the map for fear that when they do so, there's pretty much a guarantee that there's going to be a storm jump deep on top of you that ends up ensuring that the fight goes the way of Sinister Five. So we see that energy, even to just take a meager tier one in the top lane, realize they have to bunch up as five because. The heroes that are available right now for Sinister 5, unlike in the previous games, actually scary to fight into them 1v2 or 2v3 at this point. Yeah, tier 2 now under threat, uh, the energy, they're going to do what they can to bring it down. Or is there going to be a response from Sinister 5? It seems like they're going to try and make whatever trade that is possible. But again, this Lone Druid is just taking building so fast, they have to respond. They're heading for the high ground here. This is very problematic. Schlinx is hanging around, going to see what he can do, but look at the damage they're doing to this tier 3 tower he has to stun up the bear responses are coming slowly but surely there's a chronosphere up but they're gonna lose a tier 3 tower with really no response at all they can't kill this bear here it comes the chronosphere is gonna catch out at least one is a big one and the blood arena on the back lines is decent but the egg does get dropped that's gonna negate things but on the back line jump forward and they got a duel down they got that's the duel model to cast away he's down the duel might not have been won but they bring down a big threat and they're keeping it going, although the bear is not here to commit damage further onto the high ground. It feels like energy just have great control in these team fights. TKC getting off the egg was really important. Forced that blood arena to be absolutely useless. Man, it just really feels so difficult for Sinister 5 to be able to take these fights, especially when they are the ones counter-engaging. There's so many individual items you have to keep track of in your mind to do this successfully against energy. And we see that the success that they've had thus far was being able to bring down this tier 3 almost to the falling limit. So Energy Esports feeling in a very positive position. Sure, they ended up losing the Lone Druid in that engagement, but they get Castaway's life out of it. Oh, uh, they're like, looking for Deppy here. Deppy must be a bit careful. He has the support of the Oracle and the rest are coming in. Oh, he still has yeah. Aegis. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I don't know what he does, yeah. Truly, you get yourself out of this one. Actually, this could be pretty scary for them. So survive. Yeah. Gotta hustle. He's He's got 45 seconds left at this Aegis. He still has the BKB access as well. There's still mental behind him with the false promise. There's this is honestly a waste of your time. Like, oh, oh and they forced the ultimate out of the lone druid. Mm, don't and die. I'm not gonna be happy about this at all. That's 70 seconds 
where they can't actually use the spell whatsoever to try and affect positive change. So that means that Energy Esports feel a lot more positive about being able to just run back up onto the high ground. There's no Chrono, there's no Arena. What are you scared of? Finish off the tower, boys. Yeah, this tower is it going to be able to bear the damage. No, it will not. It gets brought down. Saddlestone's bear whacks it away. Now they're looking for at least a lane of racks. Still yet to have a response. Dodentai jumps in, but really just to slow things down only minutely. Look at Deppy wailing away here. They bring it down, and that's going to be a lane of racks. This and Aegis times perfectly. Mm. You mentioned this Desolator, but wow. We we'll always forget, right? Now, how much of an impact it can have. The Desolate plus Demolish on the Bear bringing down these structures, plus Deppy being nearby, just to make sure they can hit onto these things as well. As Helena Rax, 26 minutes in, honestly felt like it went down without a fight, and it really did, right? Because they realized that without the ultimates, there's literally nothing they can do to jump in on that. And because there's no BKB slash Lincoln Sphere available for Castaway, or both actually, there's no way you can actually jump in either, because it's always going to be a threat of either being stunned up instantly and killed, or just dueled instantly and killed. Either way, it's a really bad look for him to try and get into these fights as well as Yeah, it's... It's been very, very difficult. I, like you say, it's, it seems like there has to be so many so many things you're thinking about if you're on Sinister 5. How do we turn these fights into our favor? And it seems far more one-dimensional for, for the side of energy. Like, we get get the better of the front line, let it hit the building, let's force them to do something silly. Yeah. And it's working for them, right? They they put the bear there, maybe they'll throw a Deppy in. He's got a BKB, he feels relatively safe. What are you doing? Sinister 5 just can't do anything. There's, there's really... Mm. It's tough for them to answer, and the sports have been doing a great job at keeping themselves in safe positions. I mean, the Phoenix's ability to just dive in, he can sit very far back and throw out the egg for a re potential retreat. Smoke should have been scouted there, though. Energy do smoke should himself. Have been. Yeah. yeah, I think they will be able to avoid getting caught out by this one, but nonetheless, they're not really making positive progress elsewhere on the map, right? We see that Costway is the only one that's being able to push out this bottom lane. But it's basically just him. He's sitting here. Oh, kind of Duel's going to be committed yet, but do they have the damage to bring him down? It seems like they will. The bear is huge. And it hits mm -hmm. Dota and Die into another dimension. And he too mm -hmm. will go down. Energy That's... just looking. they looking just so good, man. Creep have pushed in, so the, there's no backdoor protection, at least for now, onto the CF3 tower. And it's already below half health. When will it get fixed? In fact, there are creep coming in from the top, so it's going to make sure that that's going to be up for a little bit longer. Does Lone Druid have another bear? He, he will lose bear. this one. Does he have a second? Yes, he's going to spawn second, another yeah. bear. It's a lot of gold that goes for Storm, though. Yeah. Rather let this one go. You pretty much accomplished your job, right? This is pretty much the same situation we saw that they were able to bring the top lane down to before the second push ended up in getting the full lane of Rex. So this is good enough as the first salvo, I think, from them. They'll be satisfied with the state of affairs. They'll be able to chill, keep things going on that front. Uh, mid lane though, Welp might be in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, there we go, you get the arena of blood. He is still pretty healthy, should fall. He does find him, but meanwhile on the back lines, they're looking for more, but the Oracle, a great <laughs> bonus for catches out multiple. They bring down Menzel, they bring down the second, and that's gonna be the Lone Druid. Can they get the Phoenix Eggs? Yes, they will. Now they're gonna look and turn their focus onto Deppy. Two buybacks have been forced, and they have to get themselves an out. What a turnaround fight. Oh my word, did you see that net with change after that, sir? Woo! What a huge fight. That was literally a 5,000 gold swing almost. Like 4.5, 4.5k just from that yeah. one engagement instantly going the way of Sinister 5. We saw that fight. that was a 6k change, dude. 6k it was like, gold it was change. They were at 7, right? Yeah, they were at 7. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, not yeah. that one. Yeah. That's insane. You know, getting that sort of trade off is really what Sinister 5 need, and all of a sudden they're in a good position. Now they're going to look for something else here as they catch themselves a mental. Just hovering around the bouncy room, mm. hoping to get it for his team, but they are that, going to lose that too. That kind of reminds me of the previous game with a testament to one large ultimate that changes everything. In yeah. the previous game, they were relying on black holes. This game, Aghanim comes through with that chronosphere that literally changes the entire game. Now suddenly they have the gold lead here. They didn't yeah. even need to commit the arena in that engagement. And they are suddenly ahead, bearing down onto the tier two, and in a positive position to be able to claim this Roshan, which respawns in less than a minute right now. Yeah. Tier two, they are posturing around it. Can 
is there going to be a response from energy? All of a sudden it feels like energy, they are the ones with their tails between their legs as they're sitting on their high ground waiting for someone to maybe overstep their welcome. But they're going to find the tier 2. And like you say, Roshan's up and uh, will respawn in 30, 30 seconds. seconds. So. Yeah, 30 seconds. So we get the, the next Roshan. They have already macroing the courier over the, the area just to try and make sure. They probably know that it's one of the, one of the later ones. Yeah. And uh, they have to actually get away from this area because energy wants to fight them immediately because they recognize what their natural play would be after taking such a successful s series of victories. They're getting into the pit themselves. They find nothing there. But unfortunately, as this game continues, right, now we're beyond the point where Aghanim is no longer a threat on the map. He has the BKB, MKB, as well as the Mask of Madness transitioning into this Eye of Scotty. And in a game like this, right, where all of your cores are very beefy and require high HP to be effective, the Eye of Scotty can be instrumental towards making sure that every single fight that Sinister 5 takes pretty much comes oh. out in their favor every time. Five man spoke, third and die is gonna get broken. He does walk away up here and they Castaway. go straight onto the Legion Commander. Castaway does a big dive in. Blood Arena on the back is gonna at least catch the two supports and they're gonna have no real response. But Adastam's bear is here and they are going to flee in fear of the Grizzly. And uh, yeah, looks like they will lose their ogre on the back of it, but the storm jumps in very far, does find the kill onto the Oracle while he was TPing out. So one for one trade, support for support. Chronosphere not used. Mm. However, Roshan is up. They're down they the lane of Rax. They, they need to push this lane out before they can even consider doing much. Well, they're going to lose or take a lot of damage. Buyback forced again, Bustlings. Oof. In second buyback in the game for him. They're really trying to rush through this Aegis. Deppy. More train through this as quickly as he can. But here comes Soda and die with the spider legs. Oh, Big Chronosphere is going to catch up too and pin Deppy to a tree in the back here. They get the damage oh, and they're nice. going to find Deppy. This is huge. They find themselves three and most likely a Roshan to boot. No buybacks left on the side of energy. And this is a disaster. An absolute disaster for Yen. Roshan does get picked up. And of course, they have the best Aegis carrier in the game. Yep. Storm Number one. Number one, Storm Spirits, Castaway Storm Lochal. He's out here, 19 Bloodstone charges. There was a point in the game where he was pushing out this bottom lane with only 11, not really being able to have himself feeling like he has an impact in this game, but really has turned things up. And with this Orchid and Lincoln's here as well, he has both offensive and defensive aspects covered. Never really going to feel like he's going to be in a threat. I think one of the huge things, like, look how easy he's oh, able to drive this, right? Yeah, jump deep right onto the Phoenix. The LT from the Skyrath Mage is maybe going to be slightly off the mark, and the Oracle does get the Saber Mental, is going to pay with his life. And still, Legion is not alive. The Lone Druid is going to be alive in a few more seconds. Can they get enough damage to at least find the lane of racks themselves? I think they don't really have the, the speed that yeah, energy needs to bring down these buildings. So I think they're probably not going to find much more here. They themselves don't have access to and a bear with a desolator and demolish so they have to do it in a couple of more ways than what energy has to be able to have access to yeah. nonetheless though the primary thing that they wanted to do was be able to take the fight and take the game and place the pressure onto energy right so mission accomplished we're playing now decidedly on the energy side of the map they're the ones that are trying to absorb and resist as much of this pressure as possible Deppy's farm has effectively stalled out even though he had quite a bit of network going into things he hasn't been able to progress all that much since picking up this basher. The same is kind of true for Adam. Uh, what's the last Adam that he actually got for his bear? We don't even, I don't even remember after the Abyssal Blade. Was that, that's it, right? He hasn't gotten anything yeah. else since yeah. his item. So things really haven't been looking that positive for energy. And one of the things as well is that like, one of the ways that you know Silas 5 generally is looking like they're winning is once Dora and Dyer stalls out on items, but in a positive way. Once he picked up this Halberd, Vlad, Blink, he's like, cool, I'm done. I don't really need anything else. Everything that comes after this will be a nice little bonus for me, but primarily I'm just going to end up initiating the fight to get all the rest oh. of the gold. Big jump onto Deppy forces out a BKB for him. Yeah. To get himself out of dodge, it's that was an absolute necessity. Dude, that's a nine second BKB gone right now from Deppy. Yeah, just for nothing from Cosway, really. He's got a bloodstone that's going to fill up his mana. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really nice for them. And... I'm surprised to see that uh, Castaway is not going for the sheep stick here. Opting rather to go for the Shivas. Do you think they might just lack a little bit of control potentially on the, the Legion Commander potentially or even the Troll Warlord? 
Uh, I think yeah. the Shivas is necessary because... Oh, Blood team. Arena, sorry about that one. Catches out Deppi. Meanwhile, on the back lines here, duel's gonna go through onto a Faces Void, who's actually beating him up. He actually wins the duel with no extra assistance. That was a bad duel, potentially. Meanwhile, looking for more. Deppi, he does get himself pinned to a tree. Cronus, oh, no. boot, and they're looking for the Lone Druid. Are they gonna be able to bring down both? Deppi's super tanky. Of course, he does get the ulti off and keeping himself alive for a decent amount of time. But Dota and I does not care. I got Bulwark, son. There's no way you're getting through this. And a five-man team wipe. Mm, feels like GG right now, honestly. Feels like the game is... We're staring down the barrel right now, Scopy. Energy Esports, they're gonna lose a tier two tower down bottom. Aghanim is crazy, crazy big in this fight. Between him and Castaway, the two, like, he did six and a half thousand damage in that fight by itself. Castaway did almost 4k. I mean, he's he like, solo killed the Legion Commander, right? Dude, doing two. While the allies around the Legion Commander, imagine. And the Phoenix was there. Yeah. <laughs> he threw the spirit onto him. Uh, like, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's very concerning. Now, finally, a lane of Rax is going to go in their favor. There is a little bit of ship damage coming in their base, but it doesn't look like uh, Energy are going to try and do anything too sneaky there. And finally, first lane of Rax does get picked up here by Sinister Five. We've turned this game around on its head, find a second tier three, and now going to play it a bit safer. As all the timers or death timers are coming to a close. Yeah. They do manage to equalize the Rax advantage. They have now claimed one back for themselves. Feels difficult to remember, but 10 minutes ago, Sinister 5 took their first lane of Rax and they were looking, or Energy rather, and they were looking like the super dominant team. But at this point, it does seem like Sinister 5 has really made the turnaround. And the issue is their late game is way better than they had in the previous game. And in fact, Storm, like we're mentioning, Storm Void versus the Druid Troll. Storm Void is probably who you put your money on going into the late yeah. game. Especially when you have a situation where there's Troll hasn't really been progressing whatsoever. Still sitting right now with the same items we saw him a few minutes ago. Has to be saving money for buyback. Hmm. Has it available? He knows he can't spend this money out. He's gonna buy out right now. Okay, cool. Gonna try and finish off this Abyssal Blade. Recognizing that his team needs the additional control and the damage if they have a hope to win this fight. But still doesn't have the full recipe finished. They need to win this fight. If this smoke gank doesn't work out, the game might really be over for them. Yeah, they go for a smoke play. It's actually going to break on Adasam's bear, so they, Sinister Five should be aware something's up. Um, Aegis has timed, so that's something that must is notable. But also the Prince's knife pickup here from Castaway, uh, sort of answering the question I have: if you can't get a sheep stick, why not just uh, farm up that that item, man? Hmm. Just try. Speaking Level of my five, wow, dude, he's been having a great game on Castaway right now yeah. level leader in the game having himself a fantastic performance there's no even a single hero on the side of energy esports that has level 20. as well there's three level 20s plus on the side of sinister five so the experience lead definitely being reflected by the thirty thousand advantage for them and in terms of the neutral items which can really help out for me it's not just the prince's knife that's available for castaway but we see the spell prism for the faceless void but as well this timeless relic making a huge difference for Doom Bunny because that means that every single time that we see that this ultimate come out inside of the bubble and or just from a fire blast, guaranteed kills are most likely to happen. Yeah. Um, notable, well, didn't go for the blade mail. Do you think this, this might have cost him a little bit? Does he maybe go back for it here? Because keeping in mind, he solo dealed the faces void who he walked straight into and he blinks away. In pure fears, Dodenda is going to cancel the Arena Blood. Big jump forward out onto him here. And uh, they're going to at least disarm the Faces Void for now. But look at the damage coming out onto Welp. But they do get the save on him for the time being. Phoenix Egg is also going to be committed. And all that was used, in fact, was just a Skyrath ult and Arena Blood, which are both on really low cooldowns. Yeah. Losing the Phoenix Egg might be costly. Oh. Jump onto Phoenix again. Oh, yeah. The Prince's uh, Life. Man. But it's not so bad because Phoenix has a uh, spell prism as well. So it's not that deep. He's going to have the supernova again in a minute. Oh, they're going to try and kill a bear. And they're going to probably do it quite successfully. Ton of money going into the pocket of Aghanim. Uh, off the back of that. And he's going to be... I'm sure he's got an item flying out to him. He was... He had the... Uh, butterfly cute. Okay, no. He's actually going for a Mjolnir. I think he's recognizing that honestly... When is he really staring down the barrel of death such that he has to worry about 
the butterfly there's not nearly enough damage coming out anymore from these cores on the side of energy he's outstripping them by such a large amount that they don't really hurt him i mean i really hate to hop back on this but Deppy only now going to be able to finish off the abyssal blade and even then not going to be really providing that massive damage threat that's going to make sure warlord really afraid Yep, Chronosphere and Arena Blood used here. They catch out too. A ton of damage coming out. Aghanim is just beating them up. Now a barback full staff from the Phoenix. Gonna see what he can do, but does not have Egg. Well, in fact, that Egg is gonna be off cooldown right now. Can they do something about it though? Pinning Troll Warlord to the wall here. Now he looks to turn this one around at least. The faces for it, taking a truck ton of damage. He's not gonna no. walk it away. He gets bashed multiple times. And oh, no. it seems like a decent turnaround here for energy. Big jump in from Castaway. You're going to see if he can slow at least this down for a little bit longer. Oh, no. And finally, they find Dota and die. Will they find more? Oh, goodness. Doom Bunny? I think they get Doom Bunny as well. First it bash, oh, let's see. Okay, not going to find no. him. <laughs> he gets himself one out. And Schlinx is going to find that there is a certain gentleman who has respawned and is carrying a refresh orb. Hmm. So. Do they, I don't think they have enough time to take this though, because that's to clean up the damage that's being done into their base hmm. before they can move out properly onto the Roshan pit. But man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, what a fight there from energy defending on the high ground. Ah oh, man, one of the things that really went wrong there is that we saw that the space is void. He was pretty far forward, looking like he was in a decent position, but sort of underestimated how quickly some of the damage can come out when they're not just like trying to disperse it, but they're focusing directly on one person. And before he has a chance to get saved or jump himself out, pretty much the fight's over. Then everybody else is trying to flee away. So it does show that there's still signs of life from energy. They don't have to... They still have to keep the gas going on the side of Sinister 5. Don't allow yourself to be lulled into a false sense of security, thinking that yep. this game is actually done and dusted and settled. Better play until the very, very end. This item is going to help a lot as well. Then picking up the Bloodborne, but also... We see that here's energy down bottom. They're going to get themselves potentially a second lane of Rax. Yeah, Castaway trying to do what he can to slow down this uh, uh, Spirit Bear for as long as possible. Now they're looking for some sort of an answer. Missile Blade is going to be used. Jump in from Aghanim. Are they going to find something? They do get an Arena of Blood to catch out. Only the Legion Commander for now. Jump towards the back line now as Castaway is going to try and get rid of these supports. But really nice player from Mental. Still no one to tumble as the Phoenix Eggs are also going to drop. And nobody dying, everyone just kiting each other around this fight. And not enough damage from anyone. Goodness. Mm -hmm. The main thing though is that Sinister 5 managed to keep this bottom melee Rax arrive. That's the huge thing because though they have this massive gold lead, it's going to remain true that anytime they lose a fight, they're going to be in danger of just instantly having their base being pushed in by this bear. Big so trouble here yeah, for energy fight. though. Yeah, Roshan. Is the target, and uh, this could be a very, very quick one as they do have a Bloodthorn complete on Castaway. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's Aegis again, best hero in the game. Not just the Bloodthorn, he has 27 Bloodstone charges wow. on top of that. He has not died since that point we saw him in the bottom lane with the 11 charges on him. Absolutely bonkers performance coming in here from Castaway. We're saying that this guy. He's going to be the one that needs to make the huge changes to regain his team's lead. But man, oh man, did not expect the performance of this caliber. Here he is, keep, network leader, level 26. Keep an, eye, keep an eye on this face's void, though. Did pick up the refresher orb. Oh, can't can get the yeah. double chronosphere. That can be devastating. You know, you underestimate the, the power of it. He doesn't need to get the perfect chronosphere off the bat, but the follow-up one can be terrifying. So, got to be at least vigilance of that they're trying to do something to the spirit pair but a big jump forward here and look again he just gets destroyed well he went for the duel on the back line he had to try and bring down the faces forward he's he still yet to use chronosphere phoenix egg is going to try and deter sinister fire for now but for how long are they going to do that meanwhile the base is actually getting a little bit destroyed for sinister fire by the creep mm -hmm. don't think they're planning on pushing that out for now but something to at least note because there is a lone druid on the other side who can bring down buildings very quick Make a slip here, and your game could potentially turn around very, very quickly. There's no ultimates left, though, so it's going to find it very difficult for them to try and defend this high ground here. At the same time, Sin 5 doesn't have that much damage onto the structures, but this defense isn't the easiest for energy. Wop also bought back, so very, very low to want to jump in directly by himself on the LC. Does have dual back online, though, so we'll see. 
if that does go on. I think right now, what the question you were asking earlier about the blade mail, right now he's definitely being like, damn, I wish I had blade mail at this exact moment in time. But the lack thereof will mean that the second lane of Rax will end up collapsing. And yep. NAD was playing 2v1 in terms of the Rax advantage. Arena of Blood used there for defensively for them to give themselves an out. Now they need to catch our wave and they got one lane of Rax to secure. Golly, this has been a great turnaround here for Sins to 5. It really looked bleak for them uh, for a fair amount of time. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we are in the proper late game. So Sins to 5 literally are looking like they're in a position where they are not going to be turning back. The lead will continue to grow. Mm. The jumps are easier. The damage much more difficult to put out from the side of energy. This shield has got from Castaway has been working out perfectly. Because all of the damage that's coming in from energy esports is physical. They have literally no magical burst. And there's no realistic way to think about catching a Phoenix, uh, sorry, a Storm Spirit inside the Phoenix Supernova and or Sunray. So those spells don't even really count against that hero. So Castaway just having a god tier performance right now. The Hex is going to come out now soon. Once he, Then you have Hex and the Bloodthorn. Maximum amount of disable available from this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, seeing him actually keep the, the dust in the slot here obviously shows that he wants to jump on that Oracle and Glimmer Cape's not going to keep him alive and uh, opting for it over the boots and the cheese. Just yeah. notable, obviously having the Aegis in hand makes you feel a little bit more safe there. Now, Castaway is going to set himself up in a position where he's going to jump aggressively once again. He does have an attempt at Depi, but uh, alas, this... This tower is going to go down very slowly, and there's going to be no pressure in their base as this lane is now pushed down. Do they try and cut this wave? I feel like it's going to be a very, very slow siege coming from Sinister Five. Mid lane, they're actually going to jump it oh. to now the way. Yeah, they go for the jump forward here, but realizing that it could be a bit shaky. But mm. keeping out of Stam aware that I can you get you from anywhere. Until that jump, I'd sort of forgotten that we even had this lone droid in this game. Really does feel like this guy is not having the best of time in the last couple of minutes. The last 10 minutes really has felt like Adastam hasn't had an influence whatsoever. Like, unless he's in front of some structures right now, this bear can't really reliably get atop any of these heroes from the side of Sinister 5 to dish out the necessary damage. Nor can he be really threatening by running into the midst of the fight either. He's not really that tanky anymore in the context of how much damage is being output by Sinister 5. Oh, uh, there we go. Deal again onto the back lines. Are oh, they going to be able to bring down the faces for it? This time they do. Well, is successful. Deppy is also going to join the fray here, looking for Dota and Die. Meanwhile, on the back lines, a good save coming onto Adastam to keep him alive as the Storm Spirit's in trouble. has been feared up, and it looks like that's going to be his first death. He does go down. He's going to respawn shortly. Barback does come out from the faces for it. Looks like he's going to rejoin the fray. Of course, does have that refresh orb and hasn't been able to use even a Chronosphere as of yet. He's going to put back, though. He's already here, back in the fight to try and push yeah. us out. Yeah, he, he's definitely going to hopefully try and find a Chronosphere off the back of it. Showing that he needs to use it. They're willing to jump on him, even if they're going to lose some lives. Now, big jump forward from... And a Chronosphere oh, catches wonder. out, too. And it's a beautiful one. And they're going to get the Troll Warlord. There is a buyback instantly coming from him. But they lose the Phoenix, who, too, is forced to buy back. Adastam is hanging around. He's pretty damn tanky. A difficult man to bring down. And here comes the second Chronosphere. And it looks like this will be the death of... The lone druid for now he does that buyback and will probably be forced to use so Deppy is going to jump aggressively on to the void spirit but will it be enough dodo and die hanging around uses the spear defensively tier three tower is however taking a decent walloping here dodo and die most likely going to take a tumble here taking a fair amount of damage does get brought down bkb used by Deppy and he's going to look to fight this one in and big big trouble here for the faces void is going to go down there's a dieback and they're looking right. for more oh, Storm. God, he's going to fall slay Oh my word, Deppy just packing out tons of damage. Now they got to mop up their base. But Deppy oh, keeping them alive. Not only did Deppy keep them alive, they still have the top lane of Rax, so they didn't even get Mega throughout the entirety of that fight. It does cost them three buybacks well to maintain, but they get a dieback out of the faces for it, a kill onto this Castaway Storm Spirit, maintain the base. Oh man, what a hold from them. And it looked like it might have actually been over, especially after that second Chronosphere came out from this Faces Void, but Energy Esports with the turnaround onto Deppy, finally we see that this Troll Wallace BKB comes in handy at the exact moment that it needs to, and the damage being dished out by this guy. 
And here's the thing, right? Because they took that fight, there's only buyback available on the Storm Spirit and the Mars. Mars buys back right now, and so does Storm. But there's no buyback available for this Faceless Void. And the base really can yep. be in trouble. They're actually going for it directly. Like I spoke of, it was a lot of damage dealt, so they bring down the Legion pretty damn quickly. But the Depi and, uh, and Adastam are looking to beat up the buildings, and now it's only the... Ancient that's exposed. Can they get this? Is there an oh answer? Do they God. have the damage to stop oh this God. bear? The bear is just continually going. They look like they're going to potentially get a kill here onto the troll wall. They do. It's a five man wipe. Okay. Oh my word. They're going to turn this one around. There's no barbacks on the opposing side. In fact, there's only one barback available, and that's on the Skyrath Mage in this entire game. And the throne is exposed right now. There's absolutely nothing that's stopping them from pushing directly onto this. Cost away, gonna TP onto the top outpost. Zip in directly to clear out the creep wave. The creeps are coming, the allies are coming, the game is in their hands. And they just gonna put GG energy. They know what's up. That they can't do anything, it's over. So oh the five with the most unlikely of turn of, of events. Pull out a W. One wow. one. Man, we have ourselves a series here for the Grand Finals. Energy looking good. This game really hung in the balance for them for a decent amount of time. And then all of a sudden, Sinister 5 just turned it around with a super late game. Whew. Oh my goodness. I'm sweating, man. I'm sweating. <laughs> this is... The exact moment in the game where it turned. You know, after they took that Lena Rex top, and yeah. then they took the Lena Rex top, and they try to force that fight bottom. It goes somewhat well for them. And then I forgot who brought back to save that fight. But they end up not losing that bottom lane of Rax, and the time gets bought. And pretty much after there, it's when really Sinister 5 kick it into high gear, never allow energy to play on their side of the map again. Suddenly, the game is pretty much impossible because every single fight, this time around, it's Sinister 5 that have all the team fight, right? It's not like in the last game where it's energy that everything that they need to do. This time around, they have to deal with the Chrono, they have to deal with the Arena, they have to deal with the Mystic Flare, they have to deal with the Cast away, Storm Spirit. Can we talk about this guy? Oh my God! You know what say, I, 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 uh, I must admit that it was an amazing game to watch, and uh, I'm sure the panel themselves are also really, really keen to break down exactly what happened. Uh, we're going to jump to that in literally just a moment. I just want to give a quick update to everyone who's watching on the stream. Uh, unfortunately, we did run into some production issues, unable to connect to Twitch on our our main production PC, so we've. Uh, Managed to sort that out. I'm going to jump back into it. Promise no more underwater levels for you guys. Um, but uh, the stream will be going down for just two minutes. And we'll be back with the panel after that. Thanks so much, casters. And to the stream, we'll see you guys in just a minute.